So the role that public health plays um, varies across the country. It's dependent on each specific province. But in Ontario, we have sort of four primary roles, maybe five, depending on how you define it. We certainly, we deliver immunization programs in the schools. There are some school-based programs, mostly in grade seven. We investigate uh, any reported adverse events following immunization. That's really a part of our important part of our national vaccine safety network. We uh, make sure that the vaccines that are in the fridges of providers are safe. So we uh, inspect the fridges to make sure their vaccines are being stored uh, properly. So think about a restaurant inspection. It's the same thing for any publicly funded vaccine. And if the vaccines go out of temperature range, we work with the provider to see which vaccines they can still use and which ones they can't. And then in Ontario, we also do the whole assessment program of students going to schools. Everybody who goes to school in Ontario needs to be immunized according to the Immunization to School Pupils Act. So we collect that information and follow up with parents to make sure the uh, we have the information on record. And in broadly too, our role is to support immunization in the community. So we provide information to the people who are actually administering lots of vaccines. So family doctors, pediatricians, health promotion, messaging to the public on the importance of being vaccinated. We support the annual flu program with some clinics as well as making sure that the message is out there, it's flu season, everybody go out, get vaccinated. So we, we hear a couple of different things depending on the program. So, you know, we don't hear a lot of what would be very, you know, a new mom who's starting to immunize their two month old because they're with their pediatrician or family doctor. Certainly in the grade seven program in Ontario where the students are getting three vaccines, we'll, hear parents being concerned particularly about the HPV vaccine. So in comparison to the meningococcal vaccine or hepatitis B, and some of that is because the vaccine is newer, so it just hasn't been around as long, or parents who associate it with uh, STI vaccine as opposed to a cancer prevention vaccine. So we do hear more concerns about that particular vaccine, certainly Flu vaccine in general, we think of that quite differently than all the others. Um, we'll also hear concerns, uh, people who have specific health conditions. You know, I have uh, autoimmune disease in my family. So we provide them basic information, always encourage people to talk to their own provider. We get questions about the schedule. Why is it this way? Why does it vary across the... Uh, province, you know, sort of hear the gamut. And we really encourage our nurses and staff to just listen to the concerns that that individual has and help them with those. And, you know, we know that we're one point in a person's vaccine journey throughout their lifespan. So it's just to continue the conversation, facilitate the trust, encourage them to follow up with their own provider, really listen to the concerns of the individual parent. Asking people, first off, what is their concern? So I hear you, you know, really start with, I hear you, I want to help you. Uh, reminding people that um, we know that they have the best interest of their child at heart and we want to help them make a decision that's good for them and their child. So, you know, and a lot of it, it's, it's basic nursing, it's basic relationship with people, it's really acknowledging and realizing that we have the best interest of their child at heart as well um, in supporting the parent through the decision-making process, knowing that every parent has a different background, a different experience. So it depends. We often are interacting. If it's on the phone, we're talking, we're generally talking with the parent. In the grade seven program, the parent has consented, but we are doing the immunization. We certainly do, and that's a very different setting because the student is, all their other classmates are seeing them, but we really engage with the person, sort of get a sense of 
where that student is at. We, we give people choices, you know, particularly if somebody's anxious. I mean, some people have extreme needle phobia, but people who are just anxious, we give them techniques to calm them down, that sort of thing. So it depends on the child, the age of the child. You know, again, really assess the situation and make it very client specific. We tend not to, I mean, the, the child may not like it. They know their parent has consented. We just often ask them, you know, just about what, what their concerns are. If, you know, you know, your mom wants you to have this, your dad does, but you know, you don't seem very happy about it. Is there, you know, is there something I can do? Do you want to talk to your mom about it ahead of time? So often we'll let them, you know, call your mother, discuss it with them, just because we know that the student is there. Um, we very, very rarely get a student who outright refuses in the school clinic. Because a lot of parents, they prepare their child beforehand. You're gonna get your needle at school. The teachers, we work with the schools to help you know, make it a better experience for everybody that day. Well, so, I mean, flu vaccine in, in and of itself is different. First off, you need to get it every year. Second off, it's in terms of the flu vaccine isn't going to cover all strains of the flu. It isn't going to cover all the other respiratory things that are out there. So people have, they understand it differently. They think, well, I got the flu shot and I got sick. Well, you could easily have gotten a respiratory illness that's actually not the flu, but again, you know, we generally talk in the population, oh, I had the flu. Odds are you don't actually know that that's what you had. Um, the fact that we do, you know, the WHO makes recommendations for the flu vaccine every year in February for the next flu season. Well, you know, the flu virus, it shifts and drifts, right? As a uh, Somebody said, the one thing we know about the flu is it's coming every year, but it's, we also know it's always going to be different. So it really, it's, I mean, it, the WHO recommendations are science informed, but we don't know how the virus is going to shift and drift. And so some years are a better match than others, and we know that. So that makes it harder for somebody to say, oh, yeah, I get it because... I know it gives me very good protection like the MMR vaccine would. Or, so it is a challenging one for that.